time I ate lunch with artists, you know, as an, you know, I mean, not talking about school days, but when I was a teacher and uh, uh, I was meeting, you know, other teachers and getting a sense, because I was young, you know. Um, in 1965, I was 28 years old, you know. Um, um, so Chenard, for me, was a real help to the uh, getting into and understanding the art world. And at the same period, there were exhibitions of my work, you know. Uh, so the, also uh, in the political and social, uh, um, I should say this, uh, um, in the month before I got uh, started to work at Chenard, was August of 1965, and that was when the Watts Rebellion, the Watts, what's called the Watts Riots, but the Rebellion of the Black Community. And I had been working for a film company, delivering film, going to the labs, and you know, doing things like that. And met a lot of artists because of that, but then uh, um, when school started, I got a call from uh, uh, the University of California at Santa Barbara, and they offered me a job there were two reasons for that. The first one was I just had my one-man show at the Santa Barbara Museum in uh, 19, uh, in March of 1965. And it was a big, major one-man show, museum show. And uh, then um, the uh, rebellion took place in August. And then school started in September. So none of the schools had black teachers, you know, the universities or, you know. So uh, University of California at Santa Barbara uh, called me and um, uh, offered me a job. And I said, sure, because you know, they had a job. I was teaching, I think, one or two hours a day, uh, you know, all week instead of eight hours a day. And the pay was triple what I was making at uh, <laughs> uh, driving delivery. Uh, and uh, I said, okay, but I need a week to get my things, you know, together uh, so I can come, because Santa Barbara was 90 miles away, and, uh, you know, and I had to sort of ease, you know, the people out of my job there, and I, I told uh, the director there, and of course they were very happy for me, you know. Uh, they knew I was an, an artist and stuff. Anyway, I got home, and that night I got the call from Chenard, you know, well, I had accepted in the morning from Cal from Santa Barbara. So uh, uh, I thought, I said, well, Chenard is just 15 minutes away and it's the same money, <laughs> you know. So uh, the next day I called Santa Barbara back and uh, uh, told them that I had changed my mind because I, uh, and they said, why? And I said, well, frankly, to tell the truth, I got another offer, you know, from, uh, and they said, well, you promised us. I said, I know I did, but, uh, uh, you know, and I appreciate it. He's a guy who said, you don't know how hard we had to work to get this appointment for you. Well, I understood that dynamics and more. And so I, <laughs> I, I really did thank him, and I really did appreciate that they had. But uh, 15 minutes away and my family, you know, was, was, you know, I didn't have to adjust anything for them. So I took Chenard, and uh, I laughed. I said, you know, politics, uh, uh, you know, revolt and revolution, uh, uh, you know, all of those things were going on in that period, you see. So there was stuff that uh, was affecting the students uh, and uh, the, the collective communities, you know. Uh, they were racial, they were economic, they were against the war, they were all of that, you know. So it was a very interesting and dynamic period for me to be around Chenard and around the students of that time, you know. And uh, anyway, I, you know, I enjoyed it, you know, frankly, you know. And uh, I was a bit sorry that it uh, went to the valley, quite frankly. Um, and I did go back, uh, they invited me out uh, a couple years, a few years later, and I did one lecture at uh, the new Cal Arts and stuff. I don't know. No. Another question? Yeah. Like, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I knew that people like uh, Bob Irwin had uh, gone and taught at Chenard, you know. And his was an experimental uh, uh, approach of a kind. But before that, uh, Richard Rubin was experimental in another kind of way, 
you know, as a teacher and, and person who was there. And uh, innovative as teachers, who you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have you oh, put that down because it's right, it's right. crinkling. Is is it in the? <laughs> no, it's, not, it's making okay. that cracking. Oh sound. yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, but um, um, you got to remember, for me, I was I didn't come there as a student, so that kind of thing resonates more with students than it did with me as a teacher. I just it was what it was when I got there, and that was fine. It seemed to be open enough. It seemed to be uh, experimental enough, and it seemed the people that I knew who came out of there were certainly uh, experimental and innovative in their own approaches. So I just knew that that was there. I probably took that more for granted than uh, other people did, you know, or maybe they did. Um, it, it was what I expected. It was more arty. You know, I mean, re really, you know, I expected it to be more open. You know, the idea there probably were more parties at Chouinard in reputation. I probably went to t three or four at the most. You, you know, I wasn't a teacher who uh, socialized with students a lot. I, 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 that was never my way, you know. But some teachers and students' uh, lives were very involved with each other and stuff. I just wasn't one of those, you know. So, in that respect, uh, uh, you know, I had nothing against it. Truth is, a part of my life was at that point. I was a young father, you know, a young artist, and I was really concentrating on on those things, you know, on the art. And when I say the art, I mean art ideas and and trying to make art, trying to be sure the space I had to, you know, was, but. Um, uh, I would just say, so the whole art world in Los Angeles from 62 to 65 was something I kept going into, you know, and uh, meeting people, you know. And, uh, you know, um, the very first teaching thing I did was a part-time th thing uh, about a semester before I worked at Chouinard, uh, which was at San Bernardino Valley College. And uh, while there, I organized uh, an exhibition with Danny Johnson, Ron Miyashiro, uh, Bob O'Dowd, uh, Virginia Jaramillo, uh, Karen Hamry, uh, Ron, uh, Marvin Harden, uh, you know, uh, all younger artists in all Los Angeles at the time. And our theme for the show was uh, one, uh, a political one. There was a political proposition that was Proposition 10 or something like on, on the ballot. I can no longer remember what it was <laughs> about, but it was enough to spark us uh, to do a kind of protest. But what we did was show our own work. I used, I think, a piece of Ed Burrell's and a piece of uh, Edmund Cohn's. Uh, you know, somewhere, either Danny Johnson or I have a photograph of us. The uh, chairman of the art department at San Bernardino was a friend of mine named David Lawrence who had been a student at uh, USC. Well, art students from the different schools often were uh, bouncing off of each other, you know, uh, even in the years they were in school, but then certainly uh, afterwards, you know, for sure they were, you know, there were mixes of friendships, associations, uh, discussions, arguments. You know, the the uh, beatnik hippies, uh, as they started to be in the 60s, uh, who were more in the hills, you know. Marijuana and LSD were around. They weren't things I was interested in, you know. Uh, I didn't start to drink at all until I was about 26. So, uh, you know, a glass of wine or uh, sometimes rum, you know. But, uh, you know, my part in that stuff, you know, was... Uh, like everybody dabbled, as some people said, they smoked and didn't inhale. Well, I didn't smoke cigarettes anyway, you know, so I was ne I've never in my life been a smoker. So stuff just didn't uh, interest me, you know, something. But um, aggressive creative behavior interested me, you know, in relation to work. And uh, there are plenty of examples of that. And that did seem to be encouraged. But it wasn't the only place that encouraged it. You know, I'm not about to 
to say that, you know, and there were always people who were very individualistic. There was a painter named Hans Burkhardt there who was a, really a, a, a colleague of uh, Gorky and, and de Kooning, but he taught at USC and then he taught elsewhere. He kept being brought in here and there, but he was too independent for most places and people, you know, aggressive, but very good, good painter and stuff. So I like that kind of independence, you know, uh, among people. Uh, I like John Canavier's studio because when I went to his studio, uh, here was a guy who built a, a new uh, uh, concrete stucco building with uh, uh, cranes and, you know, equipment. And it really showed me as a sculptor that, you know, you really had to get your act together in terms of equipment and things like that, because I worked uh, personally with a very minimum of materials. I welded, and I need hammers, and uh, a few things to help me build things, uh, bend things, and, uh, uh, you know, kind of a very direct approach to things. But I taught a variety of things, working in all materials, and you know, plaster, clay, and that sort of thing. But clearly I was brought there because of my reputation as a sculptor who welded, you know. And Chouinard had brought Hunt be the year before. And in that period, welding was new, like video became new later. <laughs> what do you know um, in term about Nelbert Chouinard as a person, as an artist, as a... Uh, very little, because, as I said, I wasn't a student there. And by the time I got there, she was just barely around because she had sold the school to uh, uh, Disney. And so that administration, I guess, was taken. And she was a very old lady by then, you know. Um, if I had been a student there 10 years earlier, uh, I'm sure I would have known uh, more. But the truth is, I personally didn't. Uh, I remember vaguely seeing my image of her is this nice little old lady walking up the street from one Chouinard building to another, you know. And uh, I knew she was somebody and all of that, you know, uh, important to the history of it. But the part of the history I kept getting the stories of didn't uh, uh, include her. But I think that's just me, you know, if you talk to other Chouinard people who were really there as a part of it as students and stuff like that you'd get that, you know. Um, you know, the stuff I've heard since I've been in New York and in the recent years when people tried to redo Chouinard, you know, to, to bring it back, uh, which I think, by the way, is a very good idea because it was more a part of the city. I would say the, uh, the CalArts and the New Otis, they're part of the megalopolis <laughs> that the region is. But there was something to the character, and still is, the character of that uh, more central area of Los Angeles. And uh, in going back to L.A. and stuff, uh, um, I'm seeing the cultural stuff that's starting to, or, you know, has sort of gradually re redeveloping in that part of the city. And I think it's significant, and it's, uh, it's fertile soil for something, you know. Uh, I'd love to see that, you know. I'd come out and do free lectures. <laughs> I heard that Nelbert had this, you know, tendency to go into the inner city and, and to give kids scholarships who wouldn't normally be able to go to school. And she had an interest mm. in sort of seeing who was out there and... You'd you know, have to ask Danny Johnson okay. Okay. Or, or people, really. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying she didn't do it, but... Uh, in, that wasn't apparent in 1965 and 66. And the student body didn't reflect uh, that, you know. The, I remember one, maybe two black students at Chouinard when I was teaching there. And my eyes were clearly open for that kind of thing, so they weren't there, you know. Uh, and, uh, but that wasn't out of line with uh, Los Angeles and art schools. Uh, and here in the East, it was, you know, that stuff was just the truth about, you know, 
um, uh, how things were and stuff. Um, she she may have brought people. I'm not saying there weren't people, but there weren't many, you know. But you got to remember, in those years, if you had one or two, that people thought you had something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. I mean, you know, I I was a part of a small. Uh, I got introduced to a group of Afro-American painters uh, in the late 50s in uh, Los Angeles by one of the uh, uh, models who used to model there. There were more black models than there were black students, <laughs> you know, That's, and they kept moving to all the schools, you know. In fact, the second sculpture I ever made, the model was... Uh, a young adult black woman uh, uh, who was a model. If I remember right, she said she was from Canada, you know. The first model uh, who worked at all the schools and was a legend uh, was a woman named Cleo. I don't remember Cleo's last name, but every artist who painted in Los Angeles from 1940 to 1980, I'm sure, painted Cleo. She's probably in a whole bunch of museum uh, collections and stuff, and she'd come out of Chicago and was a part of the uh, people who came out of Chicago to California, you know, so. Uh, but, uh, um, let's see, uh, in terms of, uh, in fact, I, I, uh, I did a lecture a year ago, no, two years ago, at the uh, Afro-American Museum in uh, Exposition Park in L.A., and one of the people who came to the lecture was the one black student from Chenard that I can remember. And he's an old man with gray hair now, so, <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, and we talked about Chenard, you know, and, and uh, you know, but uh, uh, that would have been typical. You know, it's like when Marvin Harden, uh, my art painter colleague from uh, Los Angeles City College, who I went, I left there and went to USC, he left there and went to UCLA, and he was one or maybe there were two or three more black art students at UCLA, uh, but you know, it was a big and good art department. Uh, SC's art department wasn't as big, but it was a good art department. But they couldn't compare with a whole art school, you know, in terms of uh, scale and contribution, you know. And I think that's just really, uh, in that sense, Chenard is almost the epitome of the old-time art school as it moved into the post-war era and then, you know, into the 60s and the changes in uh, American and California society in the period, you know. And you have to, from my opinion, you have to uh, see those things in a context, you know. It's like they switched from streetcars to buses in that period, you know. When I first got there, I was, was still riding streetcars from place to place, and one came very near Chenard. <clears throat> you know, so, um, you know, it was an interesting time, and uh, um, I think the, uh, there's still a, not still a place, uh, it's like the Bauhaus was important, and those ideas were still important uh, in the visual arts when you talk about art and education. And I think uh, the kind of art school that developed in that period, there's still a need for it because I keep seeing the universities where most art is nowadays uh, sort of trying to be the way, excuse me, trying to be the way the art schools were, you know, and I, I keep feeling that. Things have changed in terms of technology and what's there, but in terms of the human beings and their curiosity 